Welcome to our worship service for this first Sunday in Lent. We're grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's God's mercy mercy endures forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty and most merciful Father, we we have have erred erred and strayed from from thy ways ways like lost sheep. We have have followed followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We We have have offended against thy holy laws. We have have left undone those things things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. This past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, I talked about the godly counsels which we read about in Matthew chapter 6 of prayer and fasting and almsgiving and how in the season of Lent when we have a regular practice of these things anyway how we, we can by doing something different move the prism change the way we see ourselves and see and experience our lives in various ways and how how doing something different will often lead to a shift in our perception of time for example uh, often opening space for us to discover anew what really matters to us when we start living into different kinds of vocation. For example, you take time, you take eat two meals instead of three, and you suddenly find yourself with more time on your hands. You give up booze for Lent, you suddenly find yourself television, you find yourself with more time on your hands. What do you do with that time? Do you take up reading? Do you take up exercise? What is it? This was the nature of nature of our discussion as we. See, see about becoming more fully the people we were created to be and experiencing anew the steadfast love of God as forgiveness and as renewal of life. In Mark's story of Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, we have him surrounded by wild beasts and ministered to by angels. We don't know from Mark what Jesus' interior life was like or the nature of the temptations he faced. Those, those would come with later Gospels. But we can know that whatever we learn in the wilderness, and however hard the learning, that grace abounds, that the angels will minister to us, and that all the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness, in the words of the 25th Psalm. So the 40 days of Lent have been called wilderness time, whether we choose to enter the wilderness or whether, like Jesus, we are in some sense driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. We will doubtless encounter there what the author of Psalm 25 calls enemies. The reality of external enemies can sometimes lead us to forget who we are as beloved children of God. And when we forget who we are as children of God, we become subject to all kinds of thoughts and behaviours that make us less than we were created to be. We can all too easily find ourselves becoming vengeful or scared or mean or depressed or murderous or otherwise inclined to self-destructive or addictive behaviours. But in the wilderness, facing into whatever it is we fear, we will learn or learn again the paths of the Lord which the psalmist tells us are love and faithfulness. Those who devised our lectionary must have been thinking about what we will learn during Lent. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Psalm 25 is all about learning. It's, it's an acrostic poem, which is to say each verse begins with the successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. I'm not a student of Hebrew, but I'm told that the Psalm's initial, middle and final lines spell out the word alath, which in Hebrew means learn. The Psalm is about learning. What will we learn? Or what will we learn again this Lent? And how will we learn it? Well, we're going to discover whatever we learn inside ourselves may be encountering enemies that are internal. You may be familiar with a saying attributed to the uh, early 17th century polymath Galileo Galilei, who said, you cannot teach a man anything, you can only help him find it within himself. When the Bible talks of learning, it's ultimately talking of gaining wisdom. Listen to scribes, listen to elders, yes, but in the end, true wisdom is a gift 
from God and is found within. So consider a moment for a moment this verse from our psalm. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Many years ago, I had an associate who really disliked praying the psalms at, daily, at our daily morning prayer. He called them boring Hebrew war chants. And he could be forgiven, uh, as the psalms not infrequently talk of enemies, and the 25th is no exception. Certainly, as we've noted, enemies can be external to us. Someone at work who's trying to force us out, someone at school who's cheating and getting ahead of us, someone with whom we are entangled in a legal conflict. But I suggested to my clergyman friend that he might find praying the Psalms to be more fruitful if he recognised that enemies are more often to be found within us and that for most of us, most of the time, real danger is found there. So what, if anything, can we expect to learn or learn anew in these next 40 days? Well, again, the Psalm gives us some clues. Just as the ancient Apiru, those slaves released from bondage in Egypt, were made a people and given an identity uh, as the Hebrews through the gift of the law, so we can expect to be reminded or remembered, put back together about who we were created to be. We can expect to be instructed in the counsels of the Lord, where we become mindful of our need for forgiveness, praying, remember not the sins of my youth, nor of my tran and my transgressions. And then we can expect to become mindful again of the steadfast love of God before which we are humbled. God guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. This Lent, whatever your practice, whatever, your, whatever you adopt in the way of prayer and fasting and almsgiving and reading and meditating on God's holy scriptures and all the other things that are possible when we're invited into a holy Lent, whatever your spiritual practice, I trust that you will learn, and I trust that you will learn again the steadfast love of God and the grace of forgiveness, and, and that you will be drawn ever more deeply into that love, and so ever more fully into abundant life, the abundant life we are promised in the gospel, drawn ever more fully into the abundant life today. I offer this reflection in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, hear our prayers. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. Wash us through and through. And cleanse us from our sin. We pray for our nation for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge, purge us from our sin. And we shall be pure. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. Make them hear of joy and gladness that those who are broken may rejoice. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving help. And sustain them with your bountiful spirit. In this season of Lent, we pray for those who prepare for baptism, and we pray that we might be given the grace and strength to repent and grow closer to you, O God. Create in us clean hearts, O Lord. And renew a right spirit within us. We pray for those who have died, especially Anne Pope. May they enter into the land of eternal light and your abiding peace. Cast them not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from them. We especially pray for the sick and all who suffer, especially Jed Dozier, for Mary Cadera and family, Frazier, Ian, and Ruby, for Martha and Paul Schmidt, and for Barbara Morrison. Come, 
comfort them in their distress and strengthen them in mind, body, and spirit. Lord Jesus, you proclaim the good news in Galilee, saying that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Grant each of us the strength and wisdom to repent and believe in the good news this day, always and forevermore. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. We welcome all who are watching this service, especially those who are joining us for the first time. In the YouTube description underneath this video, you'll see a link to our parish welcome card. If you'd like to be in touch with us, we would love to be in touch with you to see how we might best support you and walk alongside you in your life of faith. Also, at the end of this video, you will see an opportunity to make a financial offering to support the ministry of this parish. Your generosity enables us to continue our work in this community, in our city, and around the world, and for that we are deeply, deeply grateful. Finally, our adult inquirers class um, for this spring begins tomorrow night, Monday the 22nd, from 7 to 8.30 over p.m. over Zoom. If you're interested in reflecting on your faith, learning more about what it is that the Episcopal Church believes, um, just finding a way to deepen your own spiritual practice this Lent, know that you're welcome to join us. Um, if you are interested, please email Jim Quigley. His email information is found on our parish website. That all being said, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own do we give thee. For those who would like to share bread and wine as we say the communion prayer, we invite you to pause your video now and gather what you need. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks and, and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, Yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. 
Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Alban and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God.